Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Now, some time ago, I made a video about the DST program for postdocs for women. And many people mentioned that there is also such a program for doing PhD at various Indian universities. So now, of course, DST stands for the Department of Science and Technology of the Government of India and these programs are typically meant for Indian women. So let's look at this program and what you can do to take advantage of this. Now essentially this program is given to women science and technologists to do PhD research. You have to be 27 to 45 years of age. There are some relaxations for some people and you have to be in the STEM disciplines that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Now this program is going to give you an independent project grant and you should be somebody who has completed their postgraduate degree. So that essentially means that you should have a bachelor's or master's degree. Now specifically the degrees they have mentioned are M-Tech, M-Phil, M-Farm and B-Tech. So from the way it has been defined it does look like if you have been somebody who has done a B-Tech degree you could do a direct PhD but do take a look at the current circular which has been given out by the DST for exact details. Now it clearly says that you should be somebody who should not be in regular employment at the time when you apply for this program. So now there are many women who do master's degree who do master's degree in various STEM disciplines and then because of various reasons maybe they couldn't get a job nearby maybe they had family responsibilities they essentially give up on their career now very often such people can do a phd so this program is trying to take advantage of this latent talent which is out there and see if they can be used to further science and technology research so i'm going to divide this video into six parts and look at various issues so let us start with point number one and that is the discipline in which you can do this phd in so essentially they have given four disciplines these are the physical and mathematical sciences the chemical sciences earth and atmospheric sciences and engineering and technology so essentially from this definition it seems that people in the engineering and science domains can do this degree and if you are somebody in a tertiary domain you could probably make a case that you can do research in one of these areas because what happens at the research level as that there is a lot of multidisciplinarity so you can many a time do research in a adjacent field now the second issue is the age requirement and it's mentioned the age has to be from 27 to 45 years and this is relaxed by three years in the case of sc st and ph candidates that is the scheduled car scheduled drive and physically handicapped candidate now it clearly says that if you are below 27 years you are not eligible for this particular fellowship now the cutoff date of the age is based on the date of submission of the vice phd application so very specific details about the age requirements are given so i think this is more intended for women who may have completed their degrees and may not have been working for some time and feel that they can now do a phd their circumstances has changed and therefore they want to take advantage of their prior degree now number three point is who can apply and rather interestingly the circular clearly says unemployed women who want to do phd so it's very clearly made for people who are essentially not having a job at this time now it also can be used by people who are not yet registered for any phd program or somebody who may be registered for a phd program but maybe you are somebody who would like to have a stipend you would like to have some extra money to do your research and so on so that's something which is often very advantageous to anybody who is trying to do their phd on their own funding now those who have over two years of experience into the phd program at the time of date of application they cannot apply so essentially if you have already been in a phd program and two years have gone then you cannot apply for this fellowship but maybe you are somebody who is only one year into the program for your PhD then I think you can apply for this particular fellowship now the fourth point is about the money so they will give you a stipend of more than 30,000 rupees per month plus HRA which is essentially the rental you need to pay to stay in some cities and so on and also they are going to give you one lakh per year 
extra grant to do your research. So many a time you need some money maybe to buy some basic consumables, some particular things you need to do for your research. You can take a look at this one lakh per year grant. Now, beside this, they are going to give your institute 50,000 rupees of money to do further overhead type of expenses. So that's going to take care of some of those expenses. Now, the fifth point is the duration and the duration of this fellowship is essentially five years. So that's the amount of time it typically takes most people to do PhD as far as the Indian system is concerned. Now, of course, the number sixth point is what do you need to do to get this particular fellowship. So you need to write a proposal, you need to submit a proposal and this is open throughout the year. So you need to take a careful look at the DST web page. I'm going to give you the link in the description box and then you need to go and figure out how you can take advantage of this fellowship. So, of course, one of my aims in this channel is to simply bring these pieces of information to people out there. Even if you are not a woman who is in this position, maybe you know somebody, you can always forward these videos to those people. So very often what happens is people simply do not know of the existence of various government schemes, various fellowships, various scholarships out there and they struggle in their own ecosystem and they are not able to take advantage of the prior education which they have obtained, which they may often have studied very hard to get their master's degree and the PhD degree is not very difficult to get for conscientious and meticulous people if they just have a good PhD supervisor, a good institution which gives them the platform to do the research and some funding which essentially lets them pay for their day-to-day -day expenses. So this was my take on the DST WISE fellowship for PhDs and I hope you benefit from this video. I'll end my video now and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.